Hi, and welcome to chapter 2.2, Mixtures. Do you ever drink coffee? I know I do in the morning. And does it taste good waking me up in the morning? But the coffee is like this solid ground, and I never have that in my coffee cup. Why not? Do you have an answer? We'll come back to that later in the video. So we want to talk about mixtures in this video, and we're going to talk about two main types of mixtures as we go through this video. So let's look at a mixture that you probably come in contact very frequently. If you go to a salad bar, you have all sorts of things. You have lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, green peppers, onions, broccoli, you name it, you have it. And you choose what you want and then put it on your plate and then mix it all up. That's a mixture. It's a physical blend of two or more components. So you have to have at least two, and that's what a mixture is. I'm gonna get my red pen, because I like red better. Okay, so you're gonna have two or more components in a mixture. Okay, most samples in matter of matter are mixture. Everything that you see most of the time is a mixture. You don't see that many pure substances. Pure substances are elements and compounds. Mixtures are a combination of things. If you look around the classroom, you'll see a carpet. It has different fibers in it. You'll see tables that are made of wood or metal with other parts in them. So there are many things around that are mixtures. Some things are very easy to recognize as mixtures because you can see the parts that make it up. For instance, chicken noodle, soup. You see chicken, you see noodles, and you see broth. Very easy to see the things that make up the chicken noodle soup. Now, air is also a mixture. You say, what? I don't see air. That's right, we can't see it because it's very, very small particles. But we know it's there. I mentioned in a previous video that we know oxygen is there because we're breathing. I also met, mentioned that there's not too much oxygen or it would start on fire. So there's nitrogen. So there's two things at least. Plus there's other gases too in very, very small quantities. So air is a mixture, okay? And we have water vapor, we have oxygen. And we have nitrogen and other gases, it's carbon dioxide. All right, so we have other gases in there too. All right, so it looks the same to us. So that's a different type of mixture. So we have two, two types of mixtures. We have heterogeneous, and man, I went too quickly. All right, five, six, seven, four, I will, Cut this part out. All right, so we have two types of mixtures. We have heterogeneous, and homogeneous. So we look at the two prefixes, hetero and homo. This means different. And this means the same. So we have different mixtures where you can see the different components and homogeneous where everything's blended really nicely and you can't see the components that make it up. So in a chicken noodle soup, the ingredients in the soup are not evenly distributed throughout the mixture. There is likely to be a little bit of chicken, maybe some vegetables, maybe some noodles in each spoonful. And each spoonful will not be the same. So it's not homogeneous, it's heterogeneous. And there's our chicken soup, the poor chicken. He looks like he's taking a bath. And as I said, the chicken noodle soup is heterogeneous. OK. 
Okay, even the chicken's heterogeneous because it, he's made up of all sorts of different parts. Okay, so heterogeneous mixtures, it is not uniform. Keyword, not uniform. And examples of heterogeneous mixtures are things like um, chicken noodle soup. Now, we have another type of mixture called homogeneous. So a homogeneous mixture is something that it looks even. So if we get some olive oil, we can see that if we look at any part of the olive oil, it looks the same. So I look at all the olive oil, I don't see little particles in it, there's no particles in it like that. It's totally pure, okay? I shouldn't say pure. It's just olive oil. So that's a mixture of things. So it's got the oil from the olives, it's got some flavorings from the olives, so that's why it's a mixture. And vinegar is the same thing. Vinegar is water and acetic acid. And acetic acid, it's about 5% maybe. If it was stronger than that, it would really burn you, but it's got that nice taste to it. Now, homogeneous mixtures, this is a homogeneous mixture, and this is a homogeneous mixture. So what we say about a homogeneous mixture is that it's uniform throughout. So homogeneous means uniform, heterogeneous means non-uniform. A special name for homogeneous mixtures, we often call them solutions. So a homogeneous mixture is often called a solution. Okay? Same thing. Usually we're talking about that with liquids more than solids. Okay, so many solutions are liquids, but we have things like um, air. Air is a homogeneous mixture of the different gases in air. Okay? So technically we call call it a solution. And also some solids like stainless steel has iron, chromium, and nickel in it. Um, a lot of times we call these alloys, alloys, where the metals combine and form a homogeneous mixture. Um, so we could say we can have solutions of any phases of matter or a combination of phases too. And there comes the word phase, okay? In this case, phase doesn't mean solid liquid gas necessarily. It means that it's part of the sample that has uniform composition, okay? A homogeneous mixture can only have one phase. So if you have more than one phase, it's not homogeneous. Okay, so now we mix our olive oil and vinegar and there's the vinegar right here. So this part here is the vinegar. All right, and it went up ahead without me. So right here is your vinegar. All right, and the oil is up on top. So the oil is going to float on our vinegar because it's lighter, it's, it's less dense. All right, so this becomes a heterogeneous mixture because it has two phases or layers, okay? So say you're at the beach and you realize that ocean water and sand are mixtures. How would you classify that? Which one is homogeneous? Which one is heterogeneous? Are they both homogeneous? Or are they both heterogeneous? Okay, the key thing is, can you see the parts that make it up? If you take some salt water, you're just going to see water, but you know there's salt in it because if you taste it, you'll spit it out. So, and sand, you see some brown sand, some white sand, some colored pieces of sand in there. So. What do you think it is? Which one's which? You're going to see this as a question on your quiz. So 
So salt water is homogeneous and sand is heterogeneous. Remember that. Okay, one of the important things that we have to do is separate mixtures. Okay, some mixtures are very, very easy to separate. Others are more difficult. And there's some methods that we frequently use to separate mixtures, which we're going to talk about today. So if you have a salad all mixed up and you don't like one of the ingredients, you can take your fork and remove that. But most mixtures aren't that easy to separate. Okay, what about olive oil and vinegar? You could decant it. Now, decanting is simply pouring off a harsh part, part of it. So you pour the vinegar, I mean, you pour the uh, olive oil off the top. Um, or you might cool it down because this olive oil may so solidify and then scrape it off. That's another way of doing it. A lot of times if, you, if you're a cook and you make soup, the fat will rise to the top and you can take the fat out of the soup so it's not as fatty. Okay, so that's a possibility too. Okay, so pouring it off, we know that the oil floats on water. Cooling it, it freezes at a different temperature, so one will still be liquid, one will be solid. So this leads to the fact that we use differences in physical properties, which we learned out about in 2.1, to separate mixtures. Okay, so let's look at some ways we do that. We talked about coffee earlier. What we usually do when we make coffee is we put the coffee grounds in some sort of filter. If it's one of those pods that we have today, that acts as our filter. Okay, so it doesn't let the coffee grinds down into our nice freshly brewed cup of coffee. Back in the day when we make a whole pot, we would have a filter to grab those coffee grounds and pass water through it. So we basically, in a coffee maker, we have liquid, in this case hot water, goes into the coffee grounds, it dissolves some of the coffee, and the paper filter catches the grounds, and we get a coffee solution down here. Yum. Okay, filtration is one of the techniques we use in chemistry. Okay. And sometimes we might even use coffee filters because they are filters. We have more expensive things called filter paper that comes in different sizes, and we usually put that in a funnel. So we take our mixture, pour it in a funnel, and the solid particles will stay in the filter, and the liquid will come into the next container. That's filtration in a nutshell. Those are the steps to filtration. All right, so here's a definition. You may want to stop the video and write it down, but at the end of the video, I will have a list of different terms you should know for this section. So, brewed coffee we know is a mixture of ground coffee beans and water. What process is used to separate ground coffee beans from brewed coffee? We just talked about this. You'll see this question in, a, in the quiz. Yes, it's filtration. Okay, so filtration is used to do that. Now, distillation is another technique we use to separate um, a homogeneous mixture. Okay, so the mixtures in a homogeneous mixture, especially when it's a liquid, we oftentimes heat it up to its boiling point, and if there's any solids dissolved, they'll stay behind. If the components are all liquids, you'll see different boiling points, and we can fractionate the different liquids into their components, okay? So distillation is um, basically heating something up to its boiling point and dissolving out. So here we go. We take the liquids up to the boiling point, to make a va vapor, and then we recondense it back into liquid. But whatever doesn't come across at that boiling point is not the purified substance. Okay? So here's the figure. Here's my mixture right here. Okay? This is a Bunsen burner applying heat. And then we have steam, okay, at 100 degrees, because water boils at 100 degrees. And then we have this tube, and in this tube you'll see a tube in the center. 
So let me color the center tube a little bit. So in here is a tube. Then outside of it, we have water. Try to choose blue, but I guess I got green instead. Okay, so where my green lines are, that's called a water jacket. Okay, and that's cold water. So as the hot steam comes in, it reaches a colder temperature here, so it condenses. This is called a condenser. Okay, and it condenses, and then you get water, clean water, distilled water. You've heard of distilled water before. That's how you make distilled water by using distillation. So if you, anybody ever asks you, how do you make distilled water? You heat water up, the impurities stay behind, and you get pure water. That's it. Simple as pie. Okay? So there's the solids you're going to be behind. Or if there's liquids, okay, this is important. If there's liquids, the boiling points are different. Okay, so if they have higher boiling points, they're going to be higher than water. If they have lower boiling points, that's going to be the first thing we see. And why we have the thermometer here is if we start seeing a liquids condensing before 100 degrees, it means we have something mixed with the water that has a lower boiling point. So you can do it with liquids too. All right, here's a problem for you. How could a mixture of aluminum nails and iron nails be separated? Now we talked about, let's look at the physical properties. Some, in some way, if the physical properties between nails and aluminum can be identified, we can use that difference to help us separate them. So we need to know the properties. Let me go back to red. Okay. So let's look at the properties. Aluminum is metal. It has a gray color. It doesn't dissolve in water. And it's not attracted to magnets. So we look at what type of material it is. It's a metal. We look at its color. We look at its ability to dissolve in water and its magnetic, magnetic properties. Iron has three of the same properties. Okay. But the difference is it's attracted to magnet. So magnetism Magnetism is the property that we're going to utilize to separate them. So if we have a magnet, what could we do? We could actually put a magnet and get all the iron attracted to the magnet, and the aluminum will be left behind. Okay? And that's what this slide basically says. Which physical property does filtration rely on to separate mixture, and which does distillation rely on? Again, think about that. It'll be on your quiz. Filtration relies on the size of the particle. If it's too big to go through the filter paper, then it's going to stay in the filter paper. Distillation relies on boiling point of the substance so that you can watch the boiling point and collect the, the distillate. All right, review. Mixtures can be classified as heterogeneous or homogeneous. And that's based on how the components are distri distributed. Differences in physical properties can help us separate mixtures. Okay, and here are all your definitions for this section. Stop the video. Write these down in your notebook. Good. Okay, let's go on to the next page. And there's some more. And that is it for section 2.2.